Entity Framework supports optimistic concurrency checking. In fact, it has since the first version of Entity Framework was released. There are two ways to let code first know that you want properties to participate in concurrency checks when you're working with a database. The first is concurrency check, and the other is the timestamp annotation. Let's take a look at concurrency check first. Let's say that in my domain, I want to be sure that if somebody changes the Twitter alias name, I need to be aware of that. That could definitely cause some conflicts. So I'll go ahead and apply the concurrency check annotation to the name property. Now, this isn't going to make a change to the database. What it will do is it'll impact how Entity Framework interacts with the database. It's easiest just to show you. So I'll go ahead and run the application again. And I'll make an edit to giant puppy alias. Now, this isn't about if I'm editing the name. The impact is any time I'm doing an update. And also, you'll see the behavior if I'm doing a delete also. So let's make an update to the bio. Then I'll go ahead and save. And then take a look at what happened in the profiler. When Entity Framework constructed the update command, it took note of the fact that the name field is marked for concurrency checking. So what it does is it filters on not just the key, but also the name. It wants to make sure that the name hasn't changed. Notice that I'm going to update this record where the author key is 3 and also where the name is Giant Puppy. So if somebody had changed the alias name of that record, since I pulled it back, I would get a concurrency check error to let me know. In this case, nobody else was working on that record in the database, so there was no concurrency conflict. There was no problem. For fields that are marked with concurrency check, you'll get the same behavior for a delete as well. So it will say delete from authors where author key equals three and name equals giant puppy. And again, if the name was changed since the time we pulled this record back from the database, then again, I would get a concurrency conflict and I would have to deal with it in code. The impact in the application is no different than it is for any other Entity Framework application when you're using concurrency checking. So that's the concurrency check. Now let's take it one step further with a timestamp attribute. Concurrency check I can use with any field. Timestamp is much more specific. Timestamp, which is also known as row version in a lot of databases, is a way that the database has of marking a record so we know that whenever that row has changed, that timestamp or row version will change also. So in SQL Server, timestamp is a data type, and SQL Server has the functionality for timestamp. SQL Server is also transitioned to using the term row version, but if we're using any of the Microsoft tools, they all still say timestamp is the name of that data type, so we just still think of it as timestamp. So the way you can implement timestamp in your class First, I'm going to just remove the concurrency check. And to introduce a timestamp field, I need to have a byte array. So I'm going to create a byte array. And I'm going to call it row version, just so I know exactly what that is. And then I'm going to mark it as a timestamp. So now this will have two effects. The first is what we just saw happening with a concurrency check that will happen with this field also. So Entity Framework will always use this value as part of the filter whenever I'm doing updates or deletes. So when it goes to the database, it wants to look for the row that not only that has the matching primary key, but also the value of the timestamp is still the same as it was when I retrieved that data. But what this does differently than concurrency is that it does impact the database. So if I'm creating the database, this will impact how the database is created or if I'm mapping to an existing database, it will understand to map to a particular type. I'll just go ahead and run this, and then we'll take a look at the database. Here's the new version of the database, and there's actually two columns I want to focus on, avatar and row version. In my class, avatar and row version are both byte arrays. Code first interpreted byte array by default for avatar as a var binary max. But because I marked row version with a timestamp annotation, notice that this is a timestamp type. Also, it's not nullable. 
Because it's a timestamp, SQL Server will know to update the value any time that row is modified. Then on the Entity Framework side, it will do exactly the same thing we saw with Concurrency Check, which is include that row version value in updates and deletes. So that's Concurrency Check and Timestamp.